Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you're having a great day and thanks for coming here to hang out with me today. I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm doing an, a workflow video that's like what I consider an advanced and creative landscape workflow. So this is a landscape that I shot in Iceland on the Luminar Photo Camp recently. Stunningly beautiful location, really not great light. Uh, the photos kind of, you know, it's not bad. I mean, I took it some, I kind of like it, but that's why I took it. Like you, you like the photos you're taking because you look through the camera and you're like, that was cool. Let me take a photo. So that's kind of what I did. Um, but the result isn't great. Like I said, not great conditions. And, you know, I probably could have done other things to make it better on on site, um, which hopefully I did with some of my other photos from there. I haven't had time to look at a lot of them. But anyway, I have this photo. I'm going to shut up on my rambling here. I have this photo. This is Seljalinsfoss. I, I totally butchered that. I'll put the name down below so you can see it. It's in Southern Iceland. It's like, uh, how many feet is that? I don't know, 150 feet high or something. It's a massive waterfall. If you look here, you can see people, right? These are people lining up to kind of go behind the waterfall. I did not do that. I didn't want to get soaked. Um, but that was my base photo and I wanted to create kind of a dramatic and um, I wanted to make the photo that I wanted to see. That's really what it comes down to. I wanted to see something more dramatic. I wanted better light. I just wanted a more interesting photo. And so, as you probably know, if you've seen my videos, I edit based on how I feel, right? I don't, I'm not a photojournalist, right? That's clear. I'm not sitting here saying, this is exactly what I saw. Let me do this and that and we're done, right? It's not that. Um, I edit based on emotion and how it felt to me and, and basically on what I want to portray in the image. So I wanted a sort of a dramatic landscape that was still beautiful to me. And so I turned it into that, which is rather different, um, as you can tell, right? So one more time, there's the before and there's the after. I did a lot of different things to this photo. It is what I consider an advanced workflow. Lots of this and that, lots of little touches here and there. And uh, I'm gonna reset it and we're gonna jump into it right now. Okay, so here's the base photo with just the light tool adjustments, as you know, uh, or maybe you don't know, but um, you can't uncheck the adjustments you make in the light tool. You just gotta sh sort of click the before and after. So here's the base photo. I did crop 16 by nine. I think that's obvious. Most of what I cropped out, in fact, all of what I cropped out was just more foreground. I left the top the way it was. Um, and that's after the light tool. So a tiny bit of temperature and tint, some smart contrast, and that's it. So very little uh, change there. And then I immediately went over and just said, you know what I want to do? I want to get a new sky. So I went and got the sky replacement filter and let me click that on. And the sky that I used was something that I got from um, uh, just a sky that I had in uh, Matt Seuss's sky pack. I did a video about that. It's a, it's an amazing sky pack for sale. Sales for, uh, sells for $97. You can check the video out there. Um, and you can use my coupon code GYMNEXTSKY. Saves you 20%. Anyway, it's a sky I pulled out of that pack, and I did some minor adjustments here with the horizon and that sort of thing. Um, I didn't really do anything down here. So at this point, I basically had my base photo. And so what I do generally is I'll actually do sky replacement first, and then I'll come over here and play with the light tool. That's actually what I did, but I showed you light first simply because I can't turn it off. Next step was to jump into AI Enhance. I gave that AI accent just a little bump there. Then I went to AI Structure and gave that a little bump as well. All I was doing at this point was sort of, for lack of a better word, I'm getting a feel for the image. I'm doing some very common basic edits, which is what I generally do in the Essentials tab. Then it was to Color, and what I did there is I took the vibrance down a little bit. I, did, I don't want to oversell it, and if you saw in the final result, I want to tame some of that color in the foreground anyway, add some contrast, so we're going to get to all that. But basically, there were no adjustments down here below the fold, just a reduction in vibrance in the color sliders. Okay, then I popped over to Landscape Enhancer and gave it a small bump of golden hour, simply because I do have a sunset sky, I do have some warmth here uh, in the grasses uh, on either side of the stream, and I wanted to give them just a little bit of bump, so I did that, and then um, that was it really for this layer. So at this point, I had my base photo from there to here, and I thought, you know, that's not bad. I kind of like it. I feel like I can do more. So I sat on it. And that's often what I do, especially when I get into more kind of advanced edits. I will edit for a while and then I may let it sit and then I'll come back to it. Uh, and in fact, I first edited this one a couple of weeks ago. I did a little bit of work on it, including this and the next layer. Um, but then I came back today before recording this video and did some additional steps. 
So it's totally fine to let an image just kind of simmer a little bit after you've done your initial edit in case you want to come back with sort of a fresh set of eyes to, uh, to maybe look at it a little bit differently. Okay, so next up was another adjustment layer. Let me turn that, not another, sorry, uh, a new adjustment layer. So that's adjustment layer one. Let me get over here and show you what I did here on this layer. First thing I did is I actually took uh, AI structure and I went negative across the whole photo. So I went negative 40 and really that was just a decision I made at this point, which was I wanna soften it up a little bit. I'm doing a little bit of a, uh, you know, kind of dramatic, a little bit of a moody landscape. And for me, something about that idea says, hey, don't make it too crisp. Uh, so I just uh, took a negative structure effect across the entire photo. Then I popped over here to color, and in this case, um, I didn't do anything above the fold. I, I went into advanced settings, and as you can see, I got the orange. I took the saturation down to negative uh, 34. I felt like there was a little too much um, warmth uh, and, and orange, really, just in that foreground in those grasses. So I wanted to get that under control. I also popped over to yellow, took that down a little bit, and that got me to the current state here with the colors. Oh, um, I did mask it. So let me show you the brush. I'll show you the mask. And you can see I painted these color reduction or the saturation reduction for the yellow and the orange. I painted them into those two areas on either side of the stream, simply because that's the areas that are massively colorful in terms of having a lot of land mass, for lack of a better word, in this photo with a lot of color in it. So I wanted to reduce that selectively, so I masked that color reduction into those areas. At this point, I actually thought I was about done with the photo, so I went ahead and added a vignette. And as you can see, it does uh, include some inner light that's fairly significant, and that is really me trying to draw your eye to the center of the frame, which is kind of following the, the creek here to the right, kind of up and you just kind of go like that, right? And so that was my my intent. So I put the vignette basically in the center here, kind of around the uh, uh, the waterfall. And as you can see, I didn't go very heavy on vignette, but I went fairly heavy on inner light. Okay, next I jumped over to the creative tab, and here I got mystical, and I went fairly heavy at about 65. So I just applied that globally across the entire image, just trying to give it a little bit of moodiness and a little bit of kind of... Um, I don't know, feeling is the word that comes to mind, but I just wanted to give it a little bit more oomph. And so I think Mystical does a good job of that. Creates a little bit of contrast, a little bit of shadow, helps to pop the brighter parts a little bit, which helps to bring out some of that waterfall as well. And then keeping with that theme, I went to Orton as well and did a, a, a slight amount there of a 29. So as you can see, it does a similar thing. And uh, so I often use Mystical and uh, Orton kind of together and they both add a nice little bit of contrast and a little bit of moodiness um, And again, the other thing Orton does is also give it a little bit of a softer feel Which I think fits in with kind of where I'm heading in terms of my final edit And the last stop on this adjustment layer is over on the pro tab. I went and got color enhancer. Let me turn that on um, I left brilliance alone. I bumped uh, warmth uh, or not bump, bumped it up, uh, warmth starts actually in the center, right, like at zero. I went to negative 49, so basically, let me go back to negative 49, I'm just basically cooling off the image a little bit. That's another way of helping to try to reduce some of the impact of the, um, the kind of yellow grasses. Now the next thing I did was um, add color contrast. So what you do is you set, you pick your hue uh, that you wanna create more contrast for and then your amount. So what I did is I wanna create more contrast in the blue, so what happens is the color that you choose when you start dragging the amount slider, the color that you choose will get lighter and the color that's opposite that color will get darker. And so in this case, the water is a little bit blue, which is actually okay with me. Um, so I put it in the blue and by dragging the amount to the right, I'm making the blue, which is the water, a little bit lighter. So again, I'm trying to pop that uh, appearance of brightness in the uh, in the waterfall and the opposite color, which is kind of the yellow orange gets a little bit darker. So that helps me kind of along my path of kind of cr creating that same um, feeling that I was talking about. There's the before and there's the after. Now I don't have very much in color contrast, but if I went like that, you can see it, it gets quite a bit darker in the oranges and yellows and the blues get really bright. I don't want to overdo it. I'm not trying to oversell it. In fact, I don't remember where I was. I'll, I'll leave it here at about 15 or so. Um, but that's, that's the reason I use color contrast is to create that pop between the oranges and the blues, basically. 
And at this point, I was finished with this layer. And in looking at the image, there's a few things I knew I wanted to erase. Um, I had a, a water spot, which is right there on my lens, because it was snowing. It snowed on us. It kind of rained a little bit. It was just kind of a mess, to be honest. Um, so what I did is I went and I got an, uh, uh, the eraser, and I added an erased image layer. And what I did is I took out some of these people over here, uh, and I took out that little spot there in the waterfall. And I was happy with that. And in fact, I was finished with the image. And once again, I sat on it. And I sat on it for, um, like I said, maybe two weeks or something because I came back today before recording this video and I looked at it and I was like, you know what's really bugging me is all these little sticks. I don't know if you can see them very well, but there's all these little sticks here. Um, and there's some over here and blah, blah, blah. And you know what? They just kind of drove me nuts. So um, I just was like, I want to get rid of those. So I went and added another erased image layer, which is... Um, Basically, anytime you use the eraser as a separate instance, it creates a new erased image layer for you. So I did that. I took out all those sticks um, on both sides. And I just cleaned it up because really, they're just distracting. And if you're not paying attention or if you don't zoom in, it almost looks like a fence. And I didn't want a fence in my image. I wanted to get rid of those sticks. So boom, now it's just it's cleaner, right? It just It's just cleaner. So at this point, I actually thought I was done. Uh, but then I was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe I'll do a little bit more. So I went and got another adjustment layer. And in this case, I popped over here and started playing with more tools. Okay, so the first tool here on the Essentials tab on this adjustment layer is color. So let me turn that on. And what I did is I went into advanced settings. I went into the orange. I pulled down the hue. I pulled down the saturation and I bumped up the luminance. Um, and then I went into the blue and uh, left the hue alone, took down the saturation, increased the luminance. The luminance here for the blue is gonna make that water a little bit brighter because it has some blue in it. Then I went into mask and I basically masked it in. Uh, actually, all I did is I erased it from the sky is really what it comes down to. Left it everywhere else in the photo. And so in other words, my sky is untouched and these orange and blue adjustments that I just made are impacting the land and the water. Okay, then my next stop was over here on the Creative tab, and I went and got Glow. Then this was something I wanted to try, and I, I used Soft Focus Bright, and I went fairly high, 59, and brightness of 67. But as you can see in the water, I painted it in to the water only. So, oops, I don't need advanced settings. I need to edit mask, say brush, and let me show you my mask. There you go, I painted it into the creek area at full opacity, and I painted into the waterfall at a reduced opacity of 25. And it's kind of sloppy. I was just kind of hitting it, just trying to give it a little bit of that kick because I feel like that glow, and I use soft focus bright. So let me show you the before. You can see the waterfall and especially the stream are a little bit darker. And now after, they're both a little bit brighter. The waterfall's brighter and the creek is brighter. And that's one thing I was trying to do is how do I bring that creek to, to make it a little bit more visible. I wanna brighten that up a little bit. And that was one of the tools that I used to do that. Okay, and then it's over to the Pro tab and using adjustable gradient. Let me turn that on. And you can see what I did there. I, I did not even set the orientation. I just left it defaulting into the middle of the frame. For the top, I added a contrast of 15 and I bumped the highlights uh, 19. That's covering a large part of that waterfall and again, Bumping the highlights, I'm just trying to brighten up the water to make that stand out and pop a bit more than it already was. In the bottom, um, a similar contrast adjustment of 14, uh, but I took the warmth down. I just made it a little bit cooler overall. And so from the before to the after, you can see that I've uh, created a little bit more contrast, which also, especially here around the waterfall, it's darkening the dark areas and brightening the bright areas. So it's creating a little bit more pop in the waterfall. And that, plus hitting it with the highlights, I think really helps to bring it sort of even more to the forefront of the photo. Okay, and then my next one was Dodge and Burn. And all I did here was paint in the, uh, the creek area here. I just wanted to brighten it up. I thought one more time, how can I brighten that up? I think the waterfall is plenty bright and white and kind of beaming, but I wanted to draw your eye there a little bit more with a better sort of pathway. I think naturally the lines kind of lead you to look there and then look up the waterfall, but it was kind of darker. So if you look at the before and the after, I've brightened that a fair amount. I don't want to overdo it or oversell it, but I wanted to brighten that a little bit and create a little bit more contrast between that and the land on either side and in order to make a bit more natural pathway for the eye to sort of go upstream to the waterfall in the distance. And that is really it, my friends. That is my advanced landscape workflow. Here's the before. 
fairly flat, lots of distractions. Um, you know, compositionally, I kind of like it. I like the way it's laid out with this, the creek going up to the, the waterfall and all that, but nothing's really popping off the page. And I think now we have a much more dramatic photo. The only other thing you might want to do in a case like this is go to the portrait tab, get the Orton effect, and maybe try that one more time. Um, I wouldn't overdo it like that, but maybe a light touch, like maybe 15, gives a little bit more contrast, which is gonna darken the darks and brighten the brights. And so it's gonna further sort of enhance the look of that pathway, that liquid pathway that we have here. Um, so I kinda like it like that, but I don't know. I like it the way it was too. So anyway, that's an advanced landscape workflow with some creative options thrown in. So I talked about, you know, we did some masking, we did lots of layer work. Um, various uh, filters or tools, I guess I should call them. We use the eraser and I basically, all I was doing was trying to make something that kind of spoke to me, right? So I felt like this image really kind of pops off the page, so to speak now. And if you compare it to the before, kind of washed out, kind of blah, a lot of distractions and nothing really popping. And I think after we've come a long way and it really wasn't hard. I call it advanced and creative workflow, but uh, truthfully, uh, the advanced part is just sticking with it until you get what you want. And the creative part is just experimenting with, with stuff that's gonna help you get what you want. Um, so it's sticking with it and just experimenting. That's kind of the advanced part and the creative part. So in other words, I don't want it to sound scary or intimidating. You saw the video, it's not hard. Uh, so just get in there, play around, and go experiment with your photos. And that's how I did this one, my friend. So much more dramatic. It may be too dramatic for some of your taste. Totally get it. You don't have to do what I did. These are just some ideas to give you to think about while you're out there editing your own images. And I do hope it helps, my friends. So if you like this kind of stuff, give me a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you haven't done that. And I'll see you soon with another video, my friends. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in and coming by and hanging out. I do appreciate it. I'll see you later. Take care and adios.